He says to eat and drink until the, the threat of the morning light becomes clear to you from the threat of the night, which is uh, uh, heading towards the modern time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that uh, we should continue fasting until the, until the night time comes along. So this is the, uh, what the fasting uh, encompasses. So we'll give up this, the drinking, the eating, and then being with the spouse from the Fajr time until the Madrid time. So if somebody is doing this, then we can say, yes, this person is fasting uh, according to the rules uh, and regulations of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, companion uh, and his uh, messenger has said. And then we will also say that the fasting uh, is part of the, the, the pillars of Al-Islam. So you cannot have the five pillars of Al-Islam except that fasting is amongst it. And then we will say there is no six pillar, there is only five. And I will go ahead and play this um, 
hadith that was narrated by uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab, which is uh, describing uh, what he had heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the fact, the five pillars of al-Islam. I hope uh, he's able to go through this uh, much. So this is, uh, I'm sorry for it being kind of low, but this is the narration of the hadith from Omar ibn al-Khattab, wherein he said, Bunya al-Islamu ala khams, and he goes on to mention, Shahadati an la ilaha illallah, wa anna muhammadin rasulullah, wa tuqimu salat, wa tuqti zakat, wa tahujjal bayt, wa tasuma ramadan. So it is to Bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, Him alone, He has no partner. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was His uh, messenger. And to establish the salah. So when somebody said to establish the salah, that means we pray with the, um, we pray with the jama'ah, meaning you're in the masjid doing the five daily prayers. And then to give the zakat. To give the zakat means you, you give out every year what is owed to the poor people. So the, the rich person will give out to the poor person. So everybody will find themselves in two positions. Whether you are given the zakat or you will be receiving the zakat. Every Muslim will need to find themselves. Whether you will be giving it or you will be receiving it. So make sure you are doing one or the other. The ones who do not give the zakat, this is not good. Uh, we give the zakat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our wealth. So if you cannot give it, it means you, you, you need to be receiving it. The fourth pillar will be to, to, to go to the house of Allah, the Hujjal Bayt. Uh, in, the, in the Makkah, go see the Kaaba, do the what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanded to do, to do? And the last of it will be to fast the month of Ramadan. So these are the five pillars. If you, there is no sixth pillar when it comes to uh, al al Islam. So this is uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us that the Ramadan is part of these five uh, five pillars of Al Islam. So, when somebody is fasting, he's able to overcome certain things that uh, the one that is not fasting is uh, uh, trial trial with. According to scholar Ibn Al Qayyim, Radio Lahari. According to the scholar Ibn al Qayyim, he says that when somebody is fasting, he's able to uh, overcome five, um, he's able to overcome four trials that uh, the one that is not fasting is not able to overcome. So when we find somebody is, is, uh, is fasting, we see that uh, he does not like to talk a lot. So the one that fasts, he should not like to talk a lot. When I say talk a lot, I mean talking in a way that is not beneficial. So that's called kafir to the kalam. Just talking for no benefit out of the talk that uh, you are holding. Uh, 
So Kepler to the Talab. So the one that talks a lot, uh, the Arabic they'll say, Hala, Hala Masel Imam Mithar, Al Okay the Lamu Mithar. And this means that uh, the one that likes to talk a lot, uh, rarely, rarely that you see that he is safe from from others. And rarely do people make excuses for this kind of for this kind of a person. So when somebody is fasting, the the uh, the fasting will help him to overcome. If he likes to talk a lot, if he likes to talk for no benefit, and when he's fasting, he will find himself that he is staying away from this kind of talk or this kind of uh, uh, speech that he should not be engaged in. So Petro to the Kalam, that's one of the four. Uh, for like over uh, exaggeration. Number two will be Katra to Ta'am was shut up. So the fasting is going to help somebody because when somebody is fasting, you find out that this kind of a person is the one that does not eat a lot. In fact, he's not eating at all during the day. And, uh, and he's not even drinking anything during the day. So the help, uh, the fasting is going to help this kind of a person to stay away from this. Eating a lot, drinking a lot, this is from, uh, this is not of the Islam. This is not from the early Muslims. Uh, so we have this fasting that will protect you against uh, drinking and eating a lot. Uh, the Arabs they were saying, they were saying, al natu. So this means like the one that eats a lot so that his stomach is full, it seems like it's going to take away his uh, his intelligence, his smartness. This is the saying of the Arabs. The one who eats a lot, it seems like the eating a lot is going to take away his intelligence. And to go uh, even further, the Prophet said, the Prophet said that the son of Adam has not um, killed anything worse than his own stomach. Okay. Uh, that is worse than his uh, stomach. So when you feel your stomach to be filled with food and water, this is not uh, this is the worst thing that one can do. So the fasting will kind of uh, train us uh, about the food that we eat and how much of the food that we eat, about the drinking, how much of the drinking that we eat. We get a hold of that during the month of Ramadan so that we don't uh, go overboard with it. So this is Ketra to Fa'ami wa Sharabi. And then another number three, the one that um, amongst the things that the fasting is going to help somebody overcome will be the Manam. Ketra to the Manam. So one will find himself uh, sleeping a lot. If you find yourself sleeping a lot, this is what the fasting is made for. When somebody is uh, fasting, he doesn't sleep a lot. He controls the way he sleeps. And during the Ramadan, we wake up during the night to, uh, to stand up in prayer. So this even reduces our sleeping habits. So the fasting person would like to stay away from the uh, sleeping a lot, finding himself dozing off and all of that. I know we do it, but this again, this goes against the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fasting person should not be sleeping a lot, okay? He needs to wake up and do the righteous deeds. So, and then number four will be Kaitra to the Khulpa. The Khulpa is to uh, mix uh, find yourself in a group uh, amongst people that are not good company. Listening in the marketplace like this, or the business place like this, 
how you went, you know, when you're meeting with the people, it seems like you end up doing something that uh, you should not be doing. So, test that to the foot back. So, the fasting person is not going to find himself in those kind of uh, scenarios. But rather, the fasting person, he's going to find himself amongst the group of the righteous. So, he's going to be coming to the masjid, he's going to be reading the Quran with those who are reading the Quran, he's going to be studying the deen of Allah. You're going to be teaching other people. This is how uh, the fasting person is going to find himself amongst the righteous people, doing the righteous deeds, rather than the opposite, uh, spending time with people that will have no benefit to him. So these are the fudul al arba that we need to watch out for during this uh, particular month of Ramadan. So these are called Fudul Al-Arba. Kalam, Ba'al Musharab, which is uh, number two. Manam, which is to sleep, number three. And Kulpa, which is number four. So the fasting helps somebody to overcome uh, these uh, particular four trials that every one of us uh, is faced with. So one, is able to protect himself against this four, then we can say, therefore, this person is a true, he's fasting the right way, he's a true believer. And then, when somebody is fasting, there are some benefits to it. Uh, one of the benefits of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, or the Prophet said, Man swama yawman, whoever fasts the day, peace be with uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ba'ad Allahu baynahu wa bayna nar, sabaina khalifan. Whoever fasts the day, in the path of Allah, seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to. Um, Put distance between this person and the hellfire. Uh, the distance of Sabarina Harifan, that's going to be translated as um, 70 years. So for each and every day that one person fasts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put 70 years of distance between him and the hellfire. So imagine you're doing this for 30 days. That's pretty um, good. Sure. So this is one of the benefits of uh, fasting. Another benefit of the fasting, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna khalufa tasfa'imi Inna khalufa tasfa'imi Hafiya burihi Allahi min rihi al-misq That the, I think when they translate it as the smell the smell or the, the breath of a fasting person uh, is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of the mist. The mist, uh, we can say, like a perfume uh, or cologne. So the smell of the fasting person or the, the breath of the fasting person is beloved to Allah more so than the, uh, the cologne or the perfume. So this is one of the benefits of the one who uh, is fasting. Allah loves this. And this will take us to another thing in comparison where Allah, uh, when, where uh, one of the uh, Sahabi, he used to lead uh, the Salah, but he would only recite Surah al Ikhlas. Every time he leads the Salah, he would only recite Surah al Ikhlas. So much so that the companions that were praying with him, they became upset about this. And they asked him like, don't you know any other surah besides uh, Surah to Nicholas? And then he says, of course, I know a lot. So they asked him like, why don't you, why don't you read other surahs for us? He's, he was the leader of the, of the group. But they asked him, why don't you read another surah for us? And he said, no, but this is what he likes to do. If you like, you can pray with me. If you don't like, find you another imam. So this is what he said. Of course he was their leader, so they didn't want to embarrass him. So they said, okay, okay, we're, we're going to be patient with this. 
They went to the Prophet وسلم, and they reported this to the Prophet. And then the Prophet told them to, you know, go get him so I can talk to this person. So when he came to the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet asked him, like, why are you, why do you only read Surah to the class? Don't you know any other Surahs uh, besides Surah to the class that you can read so that your companions will be happy with you? And then he promised to them, he made a promise to the, the, the Prophet. He said, Wallahi, I love this surah. I love to hear the names and attributes of Allah, which is contained in Surah Al Ikhlas. This is that he loves to hear the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he said this to the Prophet, the Prophet said, uh, The reason. Or the, the just the fact that you love this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Therefore, you're going to go to the parish. Just the fact that you love this surah. So this can this uh can be related back to this in the Khalifa Allah in the Allah this. That Allah does love this uh breath of the fasting person. So this is not to say you should not brush, okay? Uh, because uh, we know the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to use the the what the siwa the miswa. This is the sunnah, and this is what the people saw him doing. He did it all of the time, all of the time. So we are encouraged to be like our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we will use it. Even so, some of our breath will not be uh, the most. Uh, you know, lovely to our companions or the people that are around us. But that is, if you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving this, then you are somewhat at rest with that. I think every, any one of us will take that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving your breath is better than your companions' uh, complaints about your breath. So, <laughs> so this is uh, another benefit of the uh, fasting of the fasting person. Another benefit of the fasting person, of course, uh, some of the most uh, mentioned uh, hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during this three, during this uh, time, which is the very popular hadith. By this time, a lot of us know it, but uh, I'm going to mention it, inshallah. Uh, as we all know, in the Dikra, from Kaulikani, right? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the first one will be Mansama Ramadana Imanen wa ihtisaban Gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dambi Mansama Ramadana Imanen wa ihtisaban Gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dambi I wish all my brothers and sisters to really understand this. We hear it a lot, okay? But do we in, internalize it? Are we able to say it? We have to study it. We have to make it part of ourselves in the Arabic language. It's a kind of a different feeling. So I'm encouraging my brothers and sisters to really try to uh, just hearing it is not enough, but rather internalizing it and also being able to say, we need to teach it to our, our kids so that they have it, so that they can teach it to others. Mansama Ramadana, Imana, wa ihtisaban, gufira lahu ma tafadama min dhamdiki. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, having uh, belief, having faith, and also expecting the reward of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is going to forgive all of this person's previous sins. All of the previous sins. He's going to be forgiven. So this is it. Mansama Ramadana Imanan wa ihtisaban wufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhamma. And then the next one would be Man Qama 
So we have a swarmer, now we have a farmer. So swarmer is the fast, right? Swarmer literally means he fast. So man swarmer, whoever fast. So now we have man farmer. The farmer comes from the qiyam, standing up. So man farmer, whoever stands up. And the rest is the same. Man farmer. Ramadan, whoever stands up in the month of Ramadan, Iman, having faith, because of his faith, he's standing up. For if the seven, expecting the reward from no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive this person. So the same thing, man swama, man farma. So I'm, I want all my brothers and sisters, please try to get this and be able to say it back to somebody, inshallah. We'll, we'll do that, inshallah. Let's make this uh, a different kind of Ramadan, where the teachers are teaching, but we are actually uh, learning it and being able to internalize it, inshallah. And the third one will be the same kind of a sentence. Man qama layla tul Right? The same one. Man qama layla tul Now we put in the layla tul qadr. Imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. So this one we say, Man qama layla tul qadr. If you understood the, first, the second one, then the third one is easy. You just have to put layla tul qadr into it. Right? Man qama, whoever stands up. Layla tul qadr. I don't have to translate that one. Everybody will understand Layla tul qadr. The knife of power. Is that true? To, is, that, is that a good translation? The knife of power? Okay, I think uh, there will be a translation. The knife of power. Uh, so I won't translate it that way. Because other people might have a problem with this. <laughs> so we'll say the knife of decree. I think that's a proper translation, right? The knife of decree. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. So, man qama layla tul qadr. Whoever stands up in the night of the creed, imanan, having the faith, because of your faith, that's the only thing that's making you stand up. Ihtisaban, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody else. Wufir lahu ma taqaddama min dhamdihi. He will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to forgive him of all of his previous sins. Mata Kaddama is the of all of his previous sins. And I will end with one more thing, inshallah. I had this from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wherein Allah's uh, had this could see, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing the talking. So, this one goes, Kullu amali banu adam lahu illa saw wa ana ajizihi. All of the deeds, the work, the amal of the son of Adam is for him. So when he goes to Hajj, it's for him. When he does the Salah, it's for him. When he says the shahada, is for him. Except for the fasting. Okay? So except for the fasting. All of these actions that the, uh, the son of Adam will do is for him. Except for the fasting. That fasting is for me. Fasting is for me. And I'm the one who is going to reward for it. Um, there's a, a saying that the prophet, uh, or there's a saying, I cannot attribute this to the prophet because I don't have the uh, evidence for it, but I'll mention it, inshallah. On the day of judgment, the servant of Allah is going to be brought. He will stand and he's going to be um, judged. So he will stand in and then he's going to be. Um, all his good deeds, such as his fasting, 
is going to be measured, or not fasting, but his salat is going to be measured, his zakat is going to be measured or put on the scale, and all of his deeds are going to be measured and put on the scale. So when that happens, his scale is very high. But also they're going to look at his bad deeds. So maybe he took somebody's money. Maybe he spoke badly about somebody. Maybe he did this and maybe he did that and maybe he did the other one. So all of this is going to be measured on another scale. And when that is done, it seems like his bad deeds are going to be outweighing all of his good deeds. So the angels will be ready to, you know, seize this person and, and put him away. But it said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya'u, like leave this, leave my servant alone. All of his deeds are for him, except for the fasting. And then, at that time, they're going to look at his fasting, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, enter the paradise, because I have forgiven you of all of your sin because of your fasting. So just for fasting. So we'll say the fasting has saved this person from the hellfire. In another narration, or in another uh, saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there will be two things that's going to uh, be an intercessor. Intercept, I'm not very good with this word. But it's going to come between you and Allah. Intersection, right? Uh, one of those things, of course, is the, uh, the fasting. So the fasting is going to be an intercessor for you. He's going to be speaking on behalf, or on behalf of you. So he's going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have kept him away from his eating, from his drinking, and from his shahwa. And for that, he's speaking on behalf of uh, a person, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have this person um, go to the paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those uh, that the fasting will be an intercessor for. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who will be standing up and praying during the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who will be fasting throughout the Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who will witness the day that and get the benefits out of it. Um, I will end my uh, talk here, inshaAllah. Subhanallah, wa bihamdika. Nash'adu illa 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 ant. Nash'adhiruka wa natuba. No question. Only, only, uh, adhan. <laughs>